In fact, stories where a plain song produces what you might call a miracle are, I won't say they are commonplace, but they are certainly common. Um, one of my favorites involves um, some merchants and knights who are making their way through a river around the lands, what's now um, around Riga. So Lat really the whole territory, Latvia, Lithuania and Estonia, taken together, called Livo then called parts of it Livonia. And these really are some of the first Europeans who are moving into, the Western Europeans, moving into what was then a, a, a pagan, let's use that word, pagan Slavic domain. And uh, they're making their way along the river and they're making no progress at all. And it's come to the time of day where the priest who's with them, because they always carry one with them, sings the chant, Flevit Auster, the south wind blew. And that conjures the south wind to blow. So their ship moves forward. And the thing that I like about that story is it is both in a way exhilarating and yet increasingly over the years perhaps come to seem more and more sinister. It's exhilarating because it's part of that grand narrative that's told less often now than it used to be of the making of Europe of the triumph of Europe, because this is in fact a Western European Latin Christian civilization pushing its religion and pushing its traders into what had been a totally self-sufficient, independent, unknowing community of Slavic pagans. But on the other hand, of course, there are all kinds of ways, I think, in which we've come to realize in the 20th century that that grand narrative of the making of Europe was often a narrative told at the expense of many others elsewhere whose voices were silenced or who suffered from Europe's making. 